Hello and welcome everyone to the January Policy Insights. It's 2023 and we start with a fight. We have a debate in Parliament about the Financial Services and Markets Bill uh, that touches on many points, which are good, but there are also some that are not that good. That's why we have here Garrett Jones, Director from SEC Newgate. And I'm going to ask you, Gareth, what do you think about the bits of the bill that touches on crypto assets promotion? We have the ambition, I mean, the government has the ambition, which we are very supportive of, making the global crypto hub here. But not every rule goes into the same direction. What do you think of this? Uh, yeah, thanks, Ricardo. Thanks for having me on this. Um, on the financial services and markets bill, um, in my perspective, there's lots of sensible and necessary, necessary measures in the bill, but we do have concerns about certain parts, particularly the legislative powers to regulate crypto assets. Um, whilst we do understand it's clearly necessary to look at the regulation, crypto and how it's being communicated to consumers. I mean, we've witnessed huge growth in the crypto asset industry. Um, we need to make sure that that regulatory framework is fit for purpose. Um, we're also highly conscious of the recent news around crypto asset markets, most notably the collapse of FTX. This has led to some increased concerns about the impacts on consumers in this environment. I think it is crucial to ensure we have the, the regulatory measures to uh, allow consumers to invest and trade in crypto safely and in confidence and they understand the risks. Um, but it's our view that the proposed legislation as set out in the current bill is not the right solution for this. Um, our specific concerns relate to proposals that require companies offering crypto assets to have um, FISMA authorization. And in our view, this is a very blunt um, tool for regulating the financial promotions of crypto assets. Absolutely, absolutely. And what do you think that, you know, it should be done from a regulatory perspective, but also from a policy direction? Yeah, it's probably worth taking a, a, a moment or two to explain why this is a blunt tool. So, so just by way of background, the authorization regime, it, this has been in place many years across financial services. This means that all advertising and marketing around these products requires something called Part 4A uh, permissions to act as an approver. So you're allowed to actually advertise your products. The problem with applying this to crypto is that the scope will be broader and more restrictive than it is for any other types of financial services. So the, as it's currently you know, suggested, um, this will apply to any cryptographically secure digital representation or value of contractual rights that is fungible and transferable. What this will mean is not only are you hitting crypto, but also you're hitting a number of activities like payments firms and other fintechs that touch crypto. All these companies will require um, the an authorizer um, to, to approve their promotions. And what you're going to end up is quite a highly restrictive authorization regime. There's very few firms that have a necessary understanding of crypto assets and port, part 4A permissions. And what you'll end up is very, very few firms being able to do any marketing around crypto. So going back to your earlier question, sorry, Ricardo, of what can we do about this? I think it's perfectly possible to, to regulate the promotion of crypto assets in a responsible and proportional way. Um, many of these con concerns that policymakers have, have, have raised around crypto can basically be tackled through existing regulatory measures or through a more flexible regime. Um, you know, we, we could, there's, there's a detailed way of doing this, but I think that the the government and the FCA are capable of doing it. Coming, they have a track record when it comes to innovative financial regulation. We've seen, for example, the establishment of the PSR or, or the regulatory sandbox for fintech, and they could do something similar here. I have a difficult question. You don't have to respond if you don't want okay. to. But like, do you think that around this recent scandals that have happened in the crypto ecosystem like FTX, people have become more concerned about it whilst they do not understand that I mean, scandals are sadly part of life. We've seen lots of financially regulated firms that have crashed throughout time. And yes, rules change after crashes. We've seen it with the crisis, yeah. but these are also part of a of the industry. Like these things sadly happen. So it's not because something bad happens that then you have to yeah, I mean, and strangulate regulation around things. I mean, FTX collapsed as a result of mass fraud, and you know, exactly, so, which so, has nothing to do with crypto yeah. itself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, fraud is illegal. Um, as to the wider concerns that you know, crypto is 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 a potential mis mis selling scandal or is going to harm a lot of consumers if not regulated in the right way. I think you know those concerns are valid and they need to be looked at in terms of how we regulate it, but. Uh, 
the, the, the current way that the government's going about it seems to almost be regulating the industry out of existence. And I don't think that is the the best way of doing this in the long term. I mean, there is there is global demand and appetite for crypto as investment and payment products. And I think, you know, the, the government has a policy to be a crypto asset hub. So we have to kind of look at the long term on this. How's it going to work? Because if, we, if we're too stringent with the regulation, what's going to happen is you'll end up only one or two firms being able to market it, which is not a good outcome, or even worse, you'll have UK consumers going outside the UK to invest and trade in crypto um, and you have a the regulatory arbitrage issue. Absolutely. Well, this is very clear. And I hope that, you know, this message will go through. We will we'll do whatever we can to support this. It is our view that if we want to have a crypto hub in the UK, as the government wants, then we have to be consistent. And also all the various arms of the government had to operate under the same direction of travel. And with this, it seems that no one has a clear picture of what we have to achieve. So thank you very much. And uh, well, the next step is the second uh, reading, right? In the law. Yeah, the second reading November. in the House of Lords. So we've got the, the, the key stages of the House of Lords coming up in January. Excellent. Well, we will be monitoring this very constantly and hopefully to, to, to a good outcome. Thank you very much, Gareth, for your time. And Thank we'll you for having me on, Ricardo. Appreciate on. it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.